like Marvel. But I think most of us can admit we don't want Force users to have the Thanos snap and have all this unlimited power to wipe out half the people in the galaxy. So we're going to talk about Force powers and should they have a ceiling? Welcome back to the Resistance broadcast, everybody. I'm John Hoey. Thanks so much for joining us today. Being a part of the Resistance, we have a great show in store for you today. A lot of cool things to talk about, awesome topics, a great discussion, which I just alluded to about force powers. And should they have a ceiling or not? We're going to get into a deep dive on that. And of course, you guys are going to try to make Lacey laugh with your Resistance (laughs) transmissions later in the show. We have a great topic that involves this guy (laughs) that you guys gave us some answers on. So Chewie is involved. That always makes these things a lot better. But again, guys, welcome back. The base is open. News is it was popping this past week, but now it's time to do some hypotheticals and will they, won't they's. So the will of the force is with us. But before we get into it, let's say hi to Lacey Gilleran. What's going on, Lacey? Hey, guys. I'm here by myself because James is not here, but... Mm. James, yeah. James Bainey. Missy James. James Bainey uh, is, wasn't with us Monday, and he's not with us today. He uh, got caught up in the maelstrom, and he is <laughs> stuck somewhere trying to get his way back. But I got to, this cool uh, shirt on. Yeah. So Lacey has a cool shirt on. I have a cool shirt on. I'm wearing a Bob Ross shirt. Do you guys know who Bob Ross is? That painter. You're now off the podcast because it's not a Star Wars shirt. So. Who paints happy little trees and stuff like that. He relaxes me when uh, Lacey gets my anxieties up. So like Chewie's uh, gonna die. <laughs> such an idiot. Um, <laughs> okay, guys. So we we have a lot to get into here. Uh, obviously, James usually takes this one, but. Uh, Again, he won't be here, so hit James up on Twitter at Myra Trunks. Uh, He'll be back with us on Monday. So, Lacey, how do you feel about doing Will of the Force this week? Sure, why not? Okay, so cheer it. Take it away, blind man. I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. All right, the Will of the Force. Yes. We have some good topics this week. We're going to start with the first one, Hmm. which is from one of our patrons... Resistance Commander John Riley asks, "Will the Mandalorian be released with a single long form st- with a single long form story spread across ten episodes, or will it be a series of separate adventures?" John, what do you think? I think the Mandalorian will be released with a single long form story. I think they want to get into this character and take us on a journey with them, not make it one of those serial type of things where it's like, and this week on the Mandalorian, he fall, he falls into a nest of Gundarks. It's like, nope. <laughs> I think it's going to be a character development type of series where we really um, get involved with this guy and get to kind of fall for him and root for him in a sense and uh, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to say single long form story. They will. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I think it definitely is a single long form story. I kind of think it's like a Game of Thrones where there's one constant thing that's building, whereas it's different from like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where it was every episode she's fighting a different monster. Um, yeah, it'll definitely be a single long form story. Thanks for your question, John. Thanks for being a patron. We appreciate it. Um, next is Will Nick Nolte. Is it Nolte or Nolte? Nolte. Will Nick Nolte have a major role in The Mandalorian, John? No, I don't think so. Um, but I think he'll have a significant role. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I alluded to, the, uh, to this on Monday. I think he's going to be kind of um, down on his luck, old hat. He used to be somebody kind of thing who uh, passes on a torch or, or, or that sort of thing. But uh, I think he'll have uh, a cool role, but I don't think he'll have a large role at this point in his career. I think he's going to be the bad guy. I still stand by that. I think he's going to be the bad guy. So I don't know if that's a big role or like a supporting role. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think he's going to be. So I guess, yes, I think he will have a major role in The Mandalorian. All right. Um, Up next, the upcoming third Thrawn novel, Thrawn Treasons. Description states, quote, set before the finale of Rebels, Thrawn's imperial loyalty is tested. He crosses paths with with Orson Krennic, uh, Orson, what happened? And his protege, Eli Vanto, returns with dire warnings about Thrawn's homeworld. 
Will this third Thrawn book have any implications or hints as to where Thrawn and Ezra will wound, wind up? John. No. Oh, man. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. I don't think it will. No, it will not have any implications or hints as to where Thrawn and Ezra wind mm. up because I don't think the people that watch Rebels are reading the Thrawn novels. So I think it would be a lost cause to connect those two things only mm-hmm. because Rebels was made on Disney A XD for right. kids. So I can't see a kid reading a Thrawn novel. Maybe yeah. later in life, but not right now. Yeah, that's a good point um, from that perspective. <clears throat> So I'm thinking the only reason why I like a part of me wanted to give the the possibility of that happening is that they're talking about dire warnings about his home world. And this book is supposed to take place right before he appears in Rebels and makes, you know, so it's like it's like wedged right, right before that. So mm-hmm. something's going on um, on his home planet. A um, uh, lot of a lot of chiss problems going on. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to say no. Also, uh, I think you made a good point there, Lacey, on that. Um, and I, you know, I've been saying, I think they're going to do some kind of, uh, rebels, Ezra movie, animated movie to, Mm -hmm. to tell the, the further extension of that story as opposed to trying to drop hints throughout other things. Yeah. We're definitely not done with Ezra yet. No, not even close. Yeah. All right. Next, we've heard the rumors from Collider, and we've talked about this briefly on Monday. I think we talked about it a little more than briefly. Uh, but <laughs> this is Will of the Force. So, will episode nine footage be shown this month? We definitely didn't talk about this briefly. John, will episode nine footage be shown this month, aka December 19th, which I have predicted? Footage of the movie? <laughs> no, we will not see footage of episode nine this month. Why not? Because the movie has two and a half months left of filming. Because so you don't think they filmed enough to cut a teaser? Because J.J. Abrams typically doesn't like people to see things until he's done with his projects. Because Disney is in charge of uh, the trailers, not Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. So they would have to say, use this, use that, and then they'd have to get involved. There's too much involved for a movie that's not done yet. And I've heard that one of the sets is being extended two more months. I've also heard that they're doing some rewrites. at They're rewriting some of this stuff as they're going here. So I think this is a very fluid production. So to put out a teaser could be dangerous because you may be putting out something that you may be later on like, oh, that's not even close to what we were ending up with this thing. So because of the fact that there's so much left to go, we're not seeing, I, I really don't think we're seeing footage of the movie. We might see a force for change or something. We're not seeing footage of the movie this month. So I'm going to call shenanigans on that, and I say we will, and the reasoning because, one, I've already said this, two, because when they showed the teaser for Rogue One at Celebration in 2016, they reshot most of that movie later after, and they showed tons of stuff prior to that movie coming out that didn't even make it into the movie. Different situation. Two, two. Star Wars War. Dos, sir. <laughs> uh Disney D23 last year, they showed a full animated scene from Wreck-It Ralph before it was finished to the audience. Not Wreck-It Ralph. Yes, Wreck-It Ralph. Three, they showed the teaser that they just launched for Lion King. They showed that full teaser a year ago at Mm. D23, already completed when they had done nothing but that scene. Okay, but you understand the difference. Lion King, we already that story's already been told. It's a remake. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yes, matter. Yes, it does. Your, yes, it your, does. Your argument is because they haven't finished the project yet and they haven't done this, that, or the other. You're, you're that does not make sense that they're not going to show You are comparing a story that's already <laughs> locked, sealed, cemented, and being remade to a story that's brand new when they're rewriting it and doing new things. It's two completely a- apples and oranges. People. John, I cannot wait for you to eat that spoonful of sugar on the 19th. Okay, because you're going to be eating that spoonful of sugar <laughs> on the 19th. And let me tell you guys, if you didn't listen Monday, Lacey and I have a bet going because she thinks it's going to open alongside Mary Poppins. Like we're going to see a teaser of episode. Oh, but there was a caveat too. And or, or the name of the movie. Okay, yeah. so I gave her that because I got, I'm, I was, I'm just tired. And... Uh, <laughs> So if neither of those things happen, Lacey 
in honor of Mary Poppins, has to eat a spoonful of sugar. And if either of those happen, I have to eat a spoonful of sugar on the podcast. We should have made it interesting and done cinnamon. Yeah, then we got to go to the hospital. Yeah. All right. So, yes, I think there will be episode nine footage shown this month before the new year. And I stand with Collider, who said that a week ago after I had already said it a week before that with no. But I mean, I'm going to preface this with I have no inside information. That was literally me just like assuming things. Um, Collider's probably more knowledgeable than I am. Okay, and last but not least. Will Lando Calrissian have more than five minutes? I feel like we've asked this question at like a billion times in this segment. Ooh. Will Lando Calrissian have more than five minutes of on-screen time in episode nine? So is that like combined time? Yep. Ooh, that's difficult. Okay, John, you go first. Uh, no. I think Lando is going to be in this movie very briefly. Billy D. Williams is 81 years old. We're not going to have... People are thinking Lando's back, but he's not because uh, they're thinking 1983 Lando, right? Uh, I mean, he's, he's working out like crazy. That's fine. And that's fine. And that's great. And I'm glad he's back. And I'm glad he got in shape and all that stuff. But he's not going to be a big part of this movie at all. Uh, they may send him to go park the Millennium Falcon somewhere away where other cars can't ding it with their doors. Um, <laughs> and that's what old people do when they park at the mall. They park all the way far away so their Buicks don't get dinged up. Uh, but... Uh, he's going to have a small role, small part, but it's going to be great to see him. And I think, I mean, think about it, Darth Vader was only in A New Hope for like 19 minutes. So five mm-hmm. minutes for an 81-year-old Lando Calrissian is not crazy to me. So no more than five minutes, Lando. That, you No more. That's it. You know, I would love to see, I'm sure there's one out there. I would love to see a screen time analysis for like each character in all these movies, like who gets the most screen time. Because we know Last Jedi is obviously going to be Kylo Ren or Rey with most screen time. Gotta be Ray. You think it's Ray over Kylo Ren? Yeah, I think so. Probably. Um, or it's like, you know, back in the day when they did Sex in the City and Sarah Michelle, or not Sarah Michelle, Sarah Jessica Parker would count her lines to make sure she had more lines than all the other women. Really? Yeah. Dang. Fun fact of the day, guys. Poor, Kim, poor Kim Cattrall. Uh, I don't think so. So I... Lando Calrissian will not have more than five minutes of screen time in episode Agreement. nine. Agreement. I know. I, I just don't see it happening, guys. If Phasma and stuff didn't have enough screen time, why? Even Han Solo doesn't have that much screen time, and he probably has, what, like 12 minutes in, in what? The Force Awakens? No, he had more than that. Come on. You think so? Yeah, he showed up 45 minutes in, and the movie's like two hours and 20 minutes, and he was there till mm-hmm. the end. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody out into the world of internets to give me an analysis of how much screen time characters have in the new sequel trilogy, and we will do a full discussion of screen time. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I had the time to do it, but I don't. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Well, that's it. Wow, we got through this pretty quick. I'm kind of surprised. Um, Without James' long-winded answers. (laughs) We had less than five minutes of screen time in Will of the Force. (laughs) I kind of miss James's answers. I I want those full answers. Mm-hmm. I miss them. Well, next next week. Monday. Oh yeah. Well, Will of the Force next week. Yeah, a week from today. Next week. Well, on to the discussion. <sighs> Obi Wan once thought as you do. Okay. What? Yes. You guys all just heard Darth Vader. Obi-Wan did once thought as you do. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> we Will we see even greater force powers in the future of Star Wars from what we've seen recently? So, first of all, I want to thank our patron, Don Boring, for this discussion topic. He asked us a question on our Patreon page, and I thought it was so interesting that I would like to have a discussion about it. So thank you, Don. Um, We have seen force powers that we've never seen before in The Last Jedi, Um, from a force ghost to manipulating nature and creating lightning via Yoda, to Snoke bridging the minds of Rey and Kylo Ren, to Luke Skywalker projecting himself onto Crate when he never left Octo. Which Will again, we... that reveal in the movie theater, everyone went nuts. Yes. I don't care what anybody says. When everyone lost when he it. Pointed Every it time through I saw his it. chest. Yeah. Yeah. And then everyone like 
pretended that they knew and they're like if you notice he didn't leave footprints and i'm like i didn't notice i was too enthralled well i I noticed that but it didn't stick out to me what was happening until the reveal and then also at the beginning of the movie when kylo is talking to ray he goes you're not doing this the effort of it would kill you right like i didn't pick up on that the first time which makes sense for later in the movie because it ultimately kills luke yeah the thing about luke the only thing that i thought i remember when i was watching that threw me a little bit. I was like, well, why, why does he, how does he have that lightsaber now? Right. And why is he dressed like that? Yeah. yeah. Why mm-hmm. do you use just for men and get a haircut just to fight color Ren? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you wanted to believe that he was actually there and he showed up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. When yeah. he, you know, he shows up and he winks at C3PO. I was like, oh man. I love you. Uh, and then his moment with Leia. Come on. Yeah. Ugh. All right. So. Will we see ugh, anything? As in my emotions, not like ugh, as in disgusted. Right. Yes. You are melting. Yeah. Um, will we see anything greater than these powers? Will are we entering dangerous territory where force users can possess unlimited, unlimited power? power. <laughs> what is that from? Darth Sidious. In uh, Revenge of the Revenge no, of the No, Jafar says that in Aladdin. Okay, Lacey, but also <laughs> Darth Sidious. That's what I know it from, though. Does he definitely say unlimited power? Yeah, when he gets all the power from the genie and he's like, he grows. It's something he goes, power. Unlimited on power. And then he realizes itty bitty living space. Mm-hmm. Yes. But also, anyway. Darth Sidious said it in Revenge of the Sith right oh, cool. before they killed Mace Windu. Um, so. Do we? Uh, that's dangerous. Are we entering dangerous territory where these force users are getting too powerful? So, do Star Wars storytellers and perhaps more so the story group need to make sure the force has a ceiling of some sort so the characters don't flirt with immortality, invincibility, and do the whole Marvel thing where it's just out of control? Uh, so let's have well, a discussion. Well, the Thanos about it. story's been around for a while. That's not something new. The what? The Thanos story has been around since like the nineties. No, no, no. I, I know. I'm just saying. You know how. Kind of the comic book movies have these like crazy, like even Dr. Manhattan in uh, The Watchmen, he can like destroy mm. anybody at any time, mm. like that sort of thing. So, You're talking about checks and balances within the force. Bingo. So, Lacey, let's have okay. a discussion about it. Do mm. the Star Wars storytellers need to put a cap, a ceiling on force powers so that things don't get out of control? Let's tackle this from all different angles. What do you think? What do you think about the force, all the new powers we saw in The Last Jedi and where we're going in the future? Well, I'm not going to lie. The whole force projection thing really caught me off guard in The Last Jedi. I wasn't expecting it. I loved it. But it was something that, you know, you grow up with these movies and you don't see things like that. And then you see them now and you're like, wait, they could have always done this. Like what else could have been solved with this this power? But then you understand it drains their energy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, I think. I guess it's not my story to tell in the sense of like what you should do, but I think there needs to be some type of like checks and balances. So I'm going to use an example from comic books, Uh, like the X-Men. Everybody has a different power. So someone might be more powerful than someone else, but then there's always someone else that counteracts that power. Right. So I think you're, you could get into territory well where someone's like so powerful how do you beat them but i don't think we've seen that yet because everybody's been beat like everyone that's become that big bad evil has been destroyed at some point so we haven't reached that point where it's a thanos where you leave the movie theater going okay well all hope is gone why did i watch that movie i'm crying uh all my heroes are dead like we haven't reached that point so (laughs) I don't know what else, like how it could be so powerful that no one could counteract it. Because so far we've had someone step up, if not two or three people step up to fight that big, bad evil. Yeah, I I think when I, and you know, I don't like making the comic book comparisons, but for this discussion, I think it holds merit. You got to, because they have the same, yeah. I don't, you know, I always think about, the comic book heroes and you know they all have achilles heels too like a big one right even because Superman, it makes them human yep. right even superman has 
you know, his his morality is his kryptonite. thing. He doesn't kill, like to kill people, and also, of course, kryptonite, a physical thing. Um, you know, Wolverine has has his things. You know, uh, everyone has their their things that can take them down. Like Magneto can take Wolverine out because he's metal, right? Um, so with right. Star Wars, we don't really have the different powers. It's all this one force, and everyone ha- can use it in certain ways. Um, my concern is. We saw these new powers in The Last Jedi, and like you brought up, Lacey, you know, were they always able to do that? And I'm thinking, where did Luke learn that? Did he learn it in the texts? Did Yoda teach it that to him? Uh, how did he figure that out? Kind of like how Qui-Gon learned how to become a Force ghost, and then he taught Obi-Wan that. How and we come- don't really understand how Force bonds work either between Rey and Kylo. Like, that, we haven't really yeah. figured that out either because... They can touch each other, but they're not really there. And they right. can talk to each other, but nobody else sees them. Yep. And then he's got like rain on his face or whatever. And you're right. like, how is that working? They haven't really explained that either. The closest we got to that was Luke and Leia being able to telepath to each other, starting with right. Empire. Right. But they um, never appeared and touched each other. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So was that something that the dark side was strong enough in for Snoke to make that bridge happen? Uh, you know, like there's a lot of elements to that. I love so, that he was able to make that bridge happen, but he couldn't see that Kylo was going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, he he was he was too busy da, being da, 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 da. too busy being an arrogant prick, and it got the yeah. best of him. Um, so I I don't know. I am I am concerned. I had to say because they're going to start all these new stories, right? You got the Benioff and Wise, which may people are rumored may go back in time. Uh, to like Old Republic. Then you have Ryan Johnson uh, may still be doing that trilogy. Uh, and what, you know, I just don't want a force user to be like, I'm going to snap my finger and blow up Tatooine, you know? So I do think there needs to be a ceiling set just so that we understand where the limit is. And I'm not saying, say, this ranking, again, like we talked about Monday, ranking force users, but mm-hmm. I think in, there needs to be some kind of limit where it's within some sort of bubble. What do you think? And there's also something to say, too, that compared to comic book superheroes to Jedi, you have, <clears throat> when Jedi are using their powers or using the Force, you can see the physical toll it takes on them to use them. So, like, yeah, yep. Rey and Kylo fighting over the lightsaber or Luke Force projecting, like, obviously they killed him, but, like, you saw the effort it was taking him to do it. Yeah. Whereas I feel like with superheroes, like Marvel superheroes, anybody like Black Panther, who's awesome, but he's not really making an effort to do things like the only people you have ever seen really struggle are like Captain America with some type of strength test. You know what I mean? You never see them really struggling to use their powers mm-hmm. like you do with Jedi. Yeah. So I think that that alone separates them because they it seems that the force is more of a effort on their bodies and who they like who they are as a person. Um, but I don't I don't know. I can't see someone having crazy powers. But I guess my question to you, John, is like, what would you not want to see in the sense of powers? Like what would if it appeared in episode nine, would you be like, I can't this is this is out of control? Well, like I said, if if all of a sudden there is, you know, Kylo Ren, say he he finds a darker path to the dark side or Ray becomes even more powerful and all of a sudden she can like like the Phoenix Jean Grey and just destroy things with her mind. You know, that kind of stuff is a little too much for me. And Mm -hmm. I I think where my concern comes up, and I want to hear what you think about this, is we've seen Star Wars do the let's make it bigger thing. And they even joke about it to themselves saying like, yeah, it's big by the the bigger super Death Star. And then the bigger, you know, uh, Star Killer and the bigger Dreadnought and the bigger Mm -hmm. Walkers. Are they taking force powers now and, you know, the bigger force powers? So it, it right. concerns me a little and bit. And when does it stop? That's what I'm saying. So what do you think about the escalation? Like, that's what concerns me. Because if you look back before the sequel trilogy, the top <laughs> for me was force lightning. Once yeah. you hit force lightning, that was like yeah. the tippy top to, first of all, you're a bad guy. Yeah. Second of all, like that was like, unlimited power even like, in the video games you're like i finally got the f- force lightning i get and you start frying everybody right right <laughs> so my question in general is like where do things rank in like the spectrum of powers like is force lightning above force projection or is force projection above that like where do force right. bonds like how does that work yeah that um and like you say mm-hmm. you know 
you know, the Luke, his effort may have been what killed him, right? Right. Even though Ray said he died with peace and purpose, he wasn't in pain. Um, but he I used, think it just drained his power, right? He used right? all of his life force, yeah. And he, he like, accepted it. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, like, if I see Ray and it's a year later and we already saw her do things that were like, wow, she lifted all those rocks out with this again, joke about lifting, the lifting rocks, rocks yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's clear that she is extremely powerful. Um, what a, what an extra year. Because, you know, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi are, we're talking about a couple of weeks here. She goes from the sands of Jakku to not be even this- weeks. It's days. Isn't yeah, it days? I, I said weeks just to be safe because we don't know how long the Last Jedi takes place or the how long the Force Awakens takes place. You know, because I might- think the Force Awakens is literally like that happens, right? And then she gets <laughs> on the Star Killer, gets blown up. Right. She gets on the Falcon. She finds Luke. The next movie picks up when she meets Luke. So right. she has to be on. Lu- I think she does two sleeps. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I I always have a hard time being like, did they did they go to bed? Did they go to sleep that day? But they show the, her sleeping and the yeah, yeah, like so she sleeps twice, right? And I think that idea was that initially when Luke says she has three challenges or three one tests day, that yeah. then go to two, it it would be one a day. So she probably that I would assume the last Jedi is over the course of two to three days. So yeah, so I mean, which is nuts. So yeah. she unlocked all these powers, supposedly right. through that first connection with Kylo in the interrogation right. room, where what Jason Fry had given his opinion on was she unlocked these powers by being in his mind, and she's scared of them, but it's not that she skipped the training, it's that she unlocked these abilities to right. do them, right. not that she was well-versed in them. Yeah, it's so, yeah, we're talking about a few days where she goes from, you know, scavenging and hydrating muffins to being... <laughs> and muffins. elite force that user. is still the coolest one of the coolest practical effects they do and that was yes. a real thing that's yeah. so cool i would love to try one of those maybe no. maybe she, they, she doesn't eat it if she eats it what are you talking about no they she said in an interview she's like i didn't actually eat that oh really they gave her something else is it edible eat, yeah. no it's oh. like chemicals and glue and stuff or something oh okay mm-hmm. james would probably eat it he totally would yeah um (laughs) (laughs) pink stuff uh all right so yeah so a couple days she becomes this all powerful so if you jump that a year how powerful is ray gonna be you know could you imagine they open up nine with her like something happens like i don't know something blows up and a ship's about to fall on a group of people and all of a sudden it stops and then the camera and then the ship rises and then the camera tilts down and it's ray yeah like that's nuts or they're back on jack who and like ray's picking up all those down star destroyers and throwing them at other star destroyers <laughs> you know i'm serious I, don't know, I just find that a little crazy i know i think it's but- like picking up stuff like that has to be relative like i can't see a jedi picking up the death star i know but then you had like star killer the character in then, you know, it's not canon now, but the Force Unleashed, the Sam Witwer character, like, destroying planets or whatever, with pulling down moons and destroying stars. Yeah, that's ridiculous. The only thing I liked about that character was the part where he kind of, like, disintegrated people around him. I thought that was really cool. But Yeah, that's the but, Jean Grey thing. It's just like, oh, I don't like you. You're gone. <laughs> like, oh, man. Right, and that's crazy, but it looks cool. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I just can't see in the relative scale of like how small someone is. I don't care how powerful you are in the force. It, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me that you're moving planets. Because then it's like, what does that say for the rest of the story? That kind of is lazy writing in the sense of like it unravels everything else that they've built. Exactly. That's my because fear. if you're a Jedi and you can move a whole moon, why didn't you just take the Starkiller base and just throw it out into space? Right. That, and, you know, that that's a big part of my problem here is then... Or why didn't you force <clears throat> the the laser beams from Starkiller kind of like Kylo Ren and, like, force them in another direction or stop them? Like... Right. And, you know, we, we say that on a small scale, like, when we were doing our commentary for The Phantom Menace, I'm like, why didn't Obi-Wan mm-hmm. Kenobi do the sprint there to catch up to them? You know? Right, so right, right. you can point that out on a small scale. If you start doing it on a big scale, then you can point out plot holes everywhere. And you just open up that whole floodgate. So um, I think it is a concern. I wonder what they, if they already have some sort of like 
this is the bar here. Jedi and Force users are not going to be able to do this, you know, so that mm-hmm. they and they maybe have an outline. I'm just making this up, but Ryan Johnson got it from that book. He got his ideas from that old Legends book, the Jedi. Right. It's not a canon book, but it is an old Legends book about Jedi right, powers. Because he did that tweet where he zoomed yeah. in the shelf and then zoomed in and zoomed in and then opened the book. Right. And it was like the most trolley post. And I loved it. And he opened up to that page about force projection. Right. Right. So I guess my question is like, what other powers are out there? Because I wouldn't know. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know all the things that were mentioned in the EU. Or no, like- I, I don't like the EU. I, I have to admit that. Yeah. Um the only uh, book I really read when I was little in fourth grade, I used to run to the library to read the episode where Han and Leia got married. <laughs> nice. That was like my favorite thing because I was like, they belong together. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So going back to more important things. <laughs> I-, I wonder if they kind of provide the creators like via the story group, like Pablo and Leland and, and Kiri and all them get together and they're like, Here's the Jedi, here's the force powers outline and here's what right. you're able to do and what you're able not to do. And the directors and writers get to look at it and consult it when they're doing their script, maybe. Right, right. I, think I guess be- my okay. other question would be like, I wonder if anybody's ever suggested something and they've been like, no. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh I think where my biggest concern lies is that we're we're quote unquote ending the Skywalker saga now, and we and I at least anticipate makes me the, so sad. The Force is going to be around f- f- still throughout all these new stories. So I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, well, that was the bubble of how you use the Force in that saga, and now in this mm-hmm. saga, it's going to be like all this crazy things where people are able to fling space whales at each other and stuff. Space and then it's going to get to the point where I'm like, is this even Star Wars? Like I, it says, I know. Star and it kind of goes but- back to that conversation James had a couple months ago about what was the comment that was made by Tim Vaughn or not Timothy Tim Zahn, Timothy Zahn. I don't know. I said Tim Vaughn. <laughs> what where was he- that? I don't know. Uh, I'm tired. Um, where he said that like authors were allowed to override things or certain people were allowed to override the certain- movie, the movie creators, the, 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 the writers and directors. Yeah. Right. So my question is like, when does the override come become too much for the sake of being, making a flashy movie? Right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I wish we would get, you know, we're, we're able to find out some kind of answer on that, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. Just to just to put me at peace because I obsess over those types of things. Because I know you're like I can tell that like the anxiousness in your voice. It it it, it does because there's so much Star Wars coming, and I know there's mm-hmm. a lot of human level Star Wars coming. Like the Mandalorian, I don't expect a lot of Force stuff, so I'm okay there, right? Right, right, right. But, and Cassian Andor, same thing. Right. But then we're gonna get more like there's gonna be Jedi stories and. I, and if we see, it's not it, going to stop with Ray, and it's not going to stop with them, and it's not going right. to stop with Luke. Once this is over, that's not going to stop. But right. The question is, where does the power structure stop? Y- you know, and one day George Lucas is going to pass on, like in twenty five years when he's one hundred and ten. But <laughs> you know, he, it's going to move so far beyond that and distance itself further and further from the stories that created this thing. And I mm-hmm. hope it grounds itself in, in a sense. You know what I mean? Yep. So I think I think that's my concern, and I'm using. You force. mean so you don't end up with a Deadpool that has no mouth that's standing in front of a door that has yes. laser eyes? Yes, right. That's still Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I I think I'm using the force power thing as a metaphor for this, but I want Star Wars to kind of stay close to home a little bit, like like mm-hmm. like reel it in a little bit. Don't um, lose itself in the the idea of an unlimited power. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I'm curious to see when we the next movie or show we get that takes place after this timeline, mm-hmm. w- what it looks like for Force users. Um, so right. I think that's very... Uh, and I don't know. I, I'm curious to hear what James thinks about this. I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, open the floodgates. Like he, he wants to see... You think? The, I think so. I don't know. I feel like... Uh, Lightning was like the the top of the top. Once you got lightning, you were like, "Oh my gosh, this person's unstoppable." So let's play, They're so bad. Let's play. What 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 would James think? Let's guess, and then we'll see what he actually says. So I think he's anti Force Ghosts and stuff, but I think when it comes to powers and stuff, he loves the comics, and the comics he get does. weird. The comics get really weird, like with resurrection and, and masks and stupid crazy stuff. He no, would say, like "Stupid this is what crazy." He'd say, he'd say, 
I'm all for it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. Uh, I think he would be it. for it too. But um, I'm curious. I mean, do you have any other thoughts on this discussion? No, I mean, I think it's something that as a Star Wars fan, it's naturally to be a little worried because you don't want to see something go in a direction that you're like, I can't follow you. I know. Yeah. You're going down a path I can't follow. <laughs> exactly. Uh I just well, like what would yeah. what would be you ask me what my, what my limit would be what would your limit be seeing like what would you see happen in episode nine or something where you're like you gotta be freaking kidding me I think that like Ray picking up a star destroyer in Jakku <laughs> was like a, a red flag for me that I'd be like okay that is literally like two thousand times her size mm-hmm. if not more that doesn't make sense whereas like a ship you're like okay. That's like, what, 100 times? So you're like, okay, she can lift 100 times her weight. Okay. But like, those Star, star Destroyers are crazy. And what would Yoda big. say? Judge me by my size, do you? Yeah, We're not- but even then, like, a ship was kind of that <laughs> limit, right? If we think about it, like, a ship, like an X-Wing, was like the limit of what they could lift. Imagine, because we know they're Besides there. the rocks, which the rocks probably amount to a ship. Yeah. I could see her... Honestly, I could see Ray mm-hmm. lifting like the Millennium Falcon in nine. Mm. Like it's about to slide off something and she picks it up. Like it's about to get destroyed and she saves it or something like that. And then she jumps on top and surfs it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the oh, silver no. surfer. No, oh, like, no. like, a, like, a, like we know they're there. The Star Destroyers are in the ground. We've seen them yep. all the way back in The Force Awakens. The Battle of Jakku. It's documented. Yep. Yep. She even has a downed AT-AT that she lived in. Imagine she, like in the, in episode nine, like it's so ridiculous. But just picture right now, Ray, like all of a sudden, the Star Destroyer being lifted out of the sand, the sand dropping from it, and Ray throws it like a dart in a bar at another Star Destroyer and just blows up I another Star Destroyer. I just hate that Destroyer. idea because it, it kind of, <laughs> it takes the realism at it for me. Like, yeah. obviously, this is space. Guys, yeah. it's space wizards. They're fake. I get it. And I'm going to have people yelling over the their, at their screens or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's just like the idea of Harry Potter lifting something that's like lifting up Hogwarts. <laughs> that makes no sense in the universe that he yeah. would be able to lift that. Right. So why would one person be able to lift that and throw that? Like that, it just comes across as cheesy. And to me, it reminds me of like Magneto throwing crazy stuff in Days of Futures Past. And I was Mag- like, I remember b- <laughs> Magneto what? lifting the Golden Gate Bridge in the la- X Men: The Last Stand. Right, and you watch that, and you're like, "There's no way! Like, it, this doesn't make sense." Like, one of my things that one of the things I love about Star Wars is that growing up, I felt that I could be a Jedi. Same mm. with Harry Potter. I yeah. felt that someday I could get my letter and I could go because there was some realism right. based in it and there was nothing over the top that you were like, oh, he can lift his ship if he tries really hard. If I truly r- try really hard, I can lift a ship. Right. Like it was nothing ever crazy, like blow- like pulling moons down and like yeah, right. blowing people up. But like it was that realism that it was based in and that idea of like, at the end of the day, they're humans and they have weaknesses that made it so relatable. So the moment that you take that out of the story and you're like, oh, they can just lift whatever. They can do this. They can do that. They can, you know, the force projection thing didn't bother me as much because you're like, okay, it, he's thinking about it. You see Ray and Kylo together the whole movie. So you're like, okay, this kind of makes sense. It drains his energy. So then it takes from him to do that. So that's why it gets based back again in that realism. That you're like, okay. To do this, he sacrificed right. himself. So that yeah. makes sense. There, there's but to some be able kind to throw a star destroyer, like, <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> just like a paper airplane across a classroom. That's exactly that what I'm ridiculous. thinking. Ridiculous. Yeah, that is, it is. ridiculous. <clears throat> you know, you think about it, and there's always escalation in in these movies in terms of how they progress. To be fair, if she did do that in the movie, I'd probably think it was awesome. But <laughs> at the same time, I'd be like, but how would little Lacey ever think that she could do this? And I think that there is an idea that for little kids, they can be like, I can do that. I can be that person. Yeah. I mean, the first time we see the force, it's Obi-Wan doing a sound of an animal scaring away Tusken Raiders and tricking right. a stormtrooper and tapping right. a stormtrooper from 20 feet away in his shoulder. 
Uh, right. It's like, like little that. mind tricks that you're like, oh, if I had force right. powers, I could do that. Like right. lifting ships is ridiculous. And then Luke using the force was like, you know, he it, it was intangible. He turned off his computer and he trusted the force and felt the force, you know, that sort of thing. Right. And then Yoda could only lift that ship because he had been around for 900 and years. And he's freaking Yoda. Yeah. So you're going to tell me Ray's picking up Star Destroyers? Get out. I know. And the reason why, I, 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 to, to be clear, I don't think that's happening. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, in I, general. I brought that up because, you know, certain, you know, YouTubers who keep pressing this story and they tried saying it was going to happen in The Last Jedi where Luke's pulling a Star Destroyer down from space. Um, and now that he's doing it in episode <laughs> Could you nine, imagine how dumb that scene yeah. would have been? Yeah. He'd been like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like sweating <laughs> arr, arr. What? All of a sudden, what are you doing all of a sudden you see Hux and it's just like you know how in Star Wars they do they you do the cheap tilts by just doing the camera so you just see Hux going like <laughs> <laughs> he just like turns to the side because they moved the camera like in um, when they were on the space worm and Empire Strikes Back and they were supposed to lose their balance, they just moved right. the camera. Right. So around. if you, but the thing is, is like once you make that move, you have a lot of other things that you have to explain. So why couldn't Ray move exactly. all those ships out of the way of the lasers? Exactly. Why couldn't Ray, uh, you know, pull the ships to safety? Why can the? This is all the worms jumping yeah. out of the can. The, yeah. Opening that can of worms. Um, I agree. So. And the effort it took Leia to get pulled back into the ship. Yep. Like, come on, guys. Yep. Come on. And she's in space. She's floating. She even dropped the GPS thing. That's how much it took out of her. Yeah. The tracker to Ray. Um, yep. So, yeah. Um, final thoughts on this thing. Do you think we have seen the greatest force power? Do you think we'll see something even crazier? Maybe even as early as episode nine? And what are your thoughts on them hopefully having like a ceiling on force limit powers? I think we're going to see something else in episode nine. I don't know what it is, but all I'm thinking about, and I hate to compare these two guys, but they're similar in my head is, you know, Harry Potter to Star Wars. At the end of Harry Potter, you saw this big fight with, you know, other ghosts getting involved and like they helped Harry battle Voldemort yeah. and all this other stuff. Like, I don't think we've seen the end of what force powers can do. And I think they've kind of opened the gates in the sense of like what is possible. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to be something so out of the craziness that you're going to be like, what? Right. I think it still has to fit in that box that they've built. I, I'm with you. And it just made me think of this other thing, too. Because if they mm -hmm. make like Luke Skywalker able to do crazy stuff in 9, say, mm -hmm. it takes away from his death a bit. Right. Right. You know? Because then yep. it's like... Cause then well, why the didn't he just not do that? He could have yeah. done all these other things. Because then in the future, yeah. if like Ray dies, it's like, well, she'll be back as a ghost and she'll still beat someone up. Like, yep. you know, it, it's yep. like it's like how you and I were saying about and, you know, I like, you know, the Marvel movies. They're fun. Love them. But like yep. if they bring everybody back, then that last Avengers movie is kind of like not as impactful. Well, like then what's the point? Like, yeah. why are we here? If, yeah, if they're just going to bring every single character back for that Marvel movie, then why did we watch part one? Why didn't we just start with part two? Right. And then all the deaths and then disappearing kind of, it's not sad anymore. It loses its, it loses its weight. Right. Exactly. Um, so yeah. like they've been good so far with like Kenobi because he just came back and just gave some advice and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but if Luke comes back and starts frying people and stuff, I'm going to be like. Oh. Not only that, it, downs it downplays Ray's character arc. Yes, if you have right. a man coming in to save her right. when she's already stated in Last Jedi that she didn't need to be saved, right. then what's the point? Yep. Like, why bring Luke back just to do that? She's got to do it on her own. Yoda says it yep. to him. Like, she has everything she needs to do what she needs to do. So yep. why would you bring back a guy that clearly has been alone on an island because he's failed? So, like, why <laughs> would you bring him back to take the spotlight from her? And the right. fact that people argue that is just ridiculous to me. Like, why are we here? Right. What is the point of this sequel trilogy if you're just going to end up giving it back to Luke? That makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, I agree because you know it, uh, the rehash stuff bothers me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I unlimited agree. power, unlimited power. It's funny. You can, I think you can <laughs> see Ian McDiarm is like dental fillings in that scene. He opens his <laughs> mouth and he's like, ah, ah. Ah. like when he's tired <laughs> after and he does yeah. this. Mm -hmm. ah, <laughs> ah. I can't wait till I we do it. I can't a believe that Anakin sat through that whole scenario and just was like, 
cool. I'm on the right side. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. He's just like immediately he's like, I will do whatever you say. It's like, oh, yeah, sure. That was, that whatever was quick. you want. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. We should have done a Revenge of the Sith commentary. Ah. Oh, God. No. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I think that shows that we're at the end of that discussion. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, guys, force powers. Do you think, what do you guys think? Do you think we've seen our ceiling? Did Luke do it? Or will we see Ray do more crazy things in episode nine? Will someone else do crazy things in episode nine? Will we see Kylo do things he hasn't done before yet? Uh, and possibly. what kind of powers do you want to see? Exactly. What kind of powers do you want to see? Where, where do you think this is going? And more, more importantly, do you think they need to put a ceiling on force powers to kind of keep this thing reeled in? Let us know in the comments on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you can leave a comment. And of course, on Twitter at RB. A T S W N N. We hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. Obviously, we, Lacey, we got to find out what James thinks about this too. I know, um, but I'm we're all gonna, for it, man. That's what he's gonna this, say. <laughs> this is one of those discussions where we we're probably going to revisit this uh, as we see more more come out, and of course after episode yep. nine. Uh, yep, so yep. Th- thanks for listening to that. But now, speaking of at R B A T S W N N, we got to hear from you guys, and let's see if you guys can crack Lacey up because guys. It's resistance transmissions time. Lacey, what do we got going this week? All right, guys, it's time for resistance transmissions. Every week we give you a crazy situation. And I understand someone said that's not how I say situation. He said it's not the French word. I know that. I'm just being silly. I don't actually know any French. I only know je ne sais pas. Uh, Anyway, wacky situation. And uh, you give us your best answer. So this week... Even bros get ticked off at each other sometimes. One example is on Hoth when Chewie is working on the Falcon. He yells at Han and Han tells him not to lose his temper. What do you think Chewie said to Han there? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first, Mello at a Grey Jedi, our general on Patreon. Salute. Hello. He says... I'm calling Kanja Club. <laughs> <laughs> that'll get that'll get Han going, yeah. Tell that to Kanja Club. <laughs> All right. Next is Barry Mason at Barry within underscore A. Oh, with an a with an egg, I get it. <laughs> Barry says, quote, I should have eaten you on Mimbin. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that is something Chewie would say. I should have eaten you. Yeah, he, yeah. It's like, you know, I could have eaten you. I could have killed you. Yeah. <laughs> right there. I could have killed you. Yeah. Next is Van Solo at Van Linton. Hi, Savannah. Oh, hello. Next is, quote, if I catch my hair, if I catch my hand hair on fire with this torch one more time, I'm going to flip my, I'm going to rip my own arm off. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish they kept that scene in for Us Awakens. Oh, yeah, that was um Unkar plot, right? Yeah. yeah. I wonder why they left it out. I bet Do it you was think like he's going to show up? Unkar plot? Cuz Simon Pegg and JJ are boys. Yeah, but Simon Pegg's been saying some crazy stuff in the past few months. Crazy situation of the dead. Crazy situation. Uh, next is Josh V at just Joshua Ryan and he says, "Well, well, Look who's back from having fun in the snow with his new best friend. Remember when we used to have snowball fights? Ha huh, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Deleted scene reference. Yay. Very good. Next is Black Sheep at the one Megan underscore Cot, K-O-T-T-E. And Megan says, I was having the chicken pot pie. F- I was saving that chicken pot pie for later. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just inferring <laughs> that Han ate Chewie's dinner. He would. Han would yeah. totally steal a lunch. Yeah. Next is Jordan Delgadillo, another uh, one of our patrons on Patreon, at Delgadillo Art, and he says, drunk, why didn't I get a medal? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine And Chewie... yes, that's exactly what I sound like when I'm drunk. <laughs> Chewie, Chewie can speak normal basic in Star Wars, but he's just drunk all the time, so it's always like... <laughs> By the way, Lacey, did you see Jordan's art? No, I'm sure it's great. I quote tweeted it. I guess his art was featured at the premiere for The Last Jedi. He has this cool art of Luke and Kylo Ren and Rey. 
Oh, that's awesome. Go check Send it, it out. Send it to me, Jordan. He, yeah, check it. He posted it. I've it's probably on, seen it by now because I went to go find it, but. It's on his Twitter at DelgaDOR. Check that out. He's really good. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll have to see what else he's drawing. Pretty cool. Good job, Jordan. Next is Blog of the Hut at Blog of the Hut. And they say, what now? Do you think I have time to do this and clear your browser history before we take off? <laughs> what a callback. All right. We have we have uh, other people in the resistance calling back others jokes. I love it. And clear your browser history. I, <laughs> you know what? Hans probably got some sketchy browser history. Yeah. I know we've been through this, but. <laughs> and last but not least is Sean Santa Rude at Rude Cold. How rude! <laughs> and Sean says you'd make a lousy dad. Oh, oh. no! <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that one hits too close to home. <laughs> oh no, Chewy! Why would you do that? And imagine, like years later, he's like, "Remember when I told you you'd be a lousy dad?" See? Oh, Chewy. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for your resistance transmissions. If you want to be on the show, keep an eye out on our Twitter at r b a t s w n n. John will put up some crazy wacky situation, and then you guys give us your best answers, and you could be read right on the show. Back to you, John. All right, guys, thanks so much. I love that segment. It's a lot of fun. Um, Me too. Although that last one's really, uh, really hurts. <laughs> yeah. No chewy with a deep burn there. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and then Kylo deep burned Han through his chest. So there you go. No. Oh. Why All right, guys. Yes, thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed our takes on Will of the Force. Let us know what you think on those topics, as well as our discussion about Force powers. And uh, yeah, look out for the Resistance Transmissions, because we love hearing from you guys. Pop them in the comments, and you can get on the show with a shout-out to your handle. So get after it there. Make sure you're subscribed to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify. I think I covered all of them. Uh, and you know, comment on the video, comment on our tracks. We appreciate that. Share it with a friend. If you guys see a friend or family member around this holiday season and they don't listen to Star Wars podcasts or they are Star Wars fan, never have, show them our show. Maybe they'll like it and uh, we appreciate it. So thank you. Um, guys, head to um, tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. A bunch of our merch on there. About 40 or so different designs that uh, James designed most of them. Uh, cool stuff. Check it out. Uh, enjoy. Um, head to starwarsnewsnet.com for all of your latest news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. And guys, if you'd like, uh, first I have to do thank our generals. We have to thank our generals on our Patreon page. Thomas, Adam, Mello and Val, we salute you guys. Thank you so much. If, if you guys out there would like to check out our Patreon page to see what we it's have a going Patreon. on, listen to Adam. Akbar and go to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Go take a look, see what's on there. We are very active on our Patreon. We try to po- post pretty much every day, whether mm-hmm. it's a poll, a new video. Lacey and I just went to Target and we were shopping for a shopping spree. We got kicked out. We're not supposed to tell them that we got kicked out, but we may have gotten <laughs> kicked out of Target. Okay, guys? <laughs> Maybe banned from Target for life. No. Um, but uh, yeah, we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff on there. I do a rumor review video every week. James digs into the comics. Lacey's got some other cool stuff coming up. So we're, we're a very active Patreon page starting at only $2 a month. Check it out. If you dig it, join the resistance. We appreciate it. And we're only about a little over a hundred bucks for making our next goal, which would be commentary for A New Hope. Nice. Perfect. I like it. Get us to that goal and we'll get a commentary going for A New Hope. Let's that, watch a good Star Wars movie. That would be a, that'd be a lot a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. Although I still make fun of that CGI Jabba for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, guys, that brings us towards the end of our show. Remember, you guys can find me, Johnny Hoey, on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing and editing over at Star Wars News Net. How about you, Lacey? People can find me on Twitter at Lacey Gillerin and on Instagram at Lacey Gillerin, where I talk about Star Wars, my love for Kylo Ren, and just share some funny stuff every once in a while. And harass John. Mm, the huge. That's a given. That is the huge. Yes. Huge. Um, and you guys, he's not here, but you guys can find James on Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. Um, miss you, James. Yes, we miss you, James. We'll see you on Monday, buddy. 
Uh, we'll, we'll get back into a Fire Up the Resistance report with you then. Uh, guys, that is pretty much it. So we will see you on Monday with a new episode. So enjoy your weekends, and we'll see you Monday morning with a brand new episode right here on the Resistance broadcast. Look at that R2-D2 Sphero. So jealous. See you around, kids. Bye.